Hey everybody, this is Adam, and the video you're about to watch is a part of a series. Now you can watch that entire series for free over at cadjunkie.com with our free seven-day subscription. It is a no-brainer. I definitely recommend you check that out. All right, enjoy. Now, if you've never used SOLIDWORKS before, you have come to the right place, my friends. Today, we're going to build this funky little scissor thingy, technical term. And fret ye not, uh, fresh-faced newbies, we're going to start at the very beginning and assume that you know nothing about SOLIDWORKS. Now, this video is part of a broader SOLIDWORKS beginner series, but uh, it's just designed to get us comfortable with the basic lay of the land here in SOLIDWORKS 2013. And by the way, if you're using a different version, like uh, SOLIDWORKS 2011 or 2012, don't worry. The stuff we're covering today should be applicable to all versions. Now, when you open up SOLIDWORKS for the very first time, you might find that the menu bar is not visible by default. You'll just see these icons up here, but no file menu or anything like that. To see that, you mouse over the SOLIDWORKS logo, the menu bar will appear, and over on the right, there's a little push pin. If you click that, it's going to make the menu bar sticky, so it's easy to find. All right, let's go to File, New, and we're going to double click on this yellow Tetris piece with the green cube. That is an assembly. Let's double click that. And assemblies are where it's at, people. We are going to use those a lot. Now, over on the left side of our screen, this box here, this is the center of our SOLIDWORKS experience. This is where all the magic happens. SOLIDWORKS talks to you using this bar on the left of the screen, so pay close attention to that. Now let's cancel out of this default dialog with the red X here. We're going to ignore that for the moment. So we have a big blank document. Now we've come to our very first SOLIDWORKS topic, which is assemblies. Now this little Tetris piece with the green cube you can see up here at the top left of the uh, left-hand side of the screen, this is our assembly. Now, if we head back over to our scissor demo thingy, we'll take a look at that. Over on the left, we have an assembly. Once again, Tetris piece with a green cube. And down below that, you're going to see a lot of other Tetris pieces without green cubes. Now, those are called parts within our assembly. This whole area of the screen over here shows us what's in our assembly and it is lovingly referred to as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, aka the design tree for short. Now, in SOLIDWORKS, you can usually think of a part as a chunk of material stuff in the physical world, and an assembly is kind of an abstract concept. It's just a way of combining those chunks of material into a final product that can be articulated, like our scissor thingy. Now, here's a word to the wise really quickly. You're going to find that out in the wild woods of real-world design practice, there are people who design entire products using only part files and just avoid assemblies entirely. And there are lots of reasons why that might be tempting, but there are a lot more reasons why, frankly, it's kind of a bad idea. And conversely, why using parts and assemblies the way they're intended is a really, really good idea. So... I want you to lash yourself to the mast and ignore the sirens who would tempt you not to use assemblies. They're only going to lead you to ruin. Okay, so let's head back to our assembly. We're going to work in assemblies. Now, before we model anything, let's head up to Tools and down to Options at the very, very bottom and look at the Document Properties for this document. We'll head to the Units tab down below. And make sure that we are modeling in millimeters, grams, and seconds, MMGS. That's the most common thing for uh, designers to use. If you want to use inches, that's fine. Just keep in mind that we'll be using millimeters in this video series. Now, to add our first part to this assembly, I want you to just move your mouse over the viewport here, hit the S key on the keyboard, S as in shortcut, and then come over to this drop down for our uh, insert components features and click on the little arrow to the right of that and head down to new part. That's the quickest way to do that. Now that's going to put a little green check mark to the right of your mouse. That means SOLIDWORKS is waiting for something. It's not done yet. Now look at the bottom left of the screen and we can see what SOLIDWORKS wants. It says select the face or plane on which to position the new part. Now, if you're ever not quite sure what SOLIDWORKS wants, take a look at the bottom of the screen and see if it tells you. 
Okay, so let's click the front plane because that's where we want to position our part. And we're going to do that as a matter of habit, by the way. When you create a new part, just click the front plane. And then I'll click our new part twice, and I'm going to rename that plank and hit enter. Now if I deselect that by clicking out here in space, you'll see that our plank is bright blue, or at least the title of it is, and that means that it is the active part in our assembly. Further, our sketch toolbar at the top of the screen has appeared, and over the top right of the viewport, there are a couple of new buttons here. And as it happens, this little pencil icon means that we're currently editing this thing called a sketch. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Now one more thing, our assembly units are set to metric units, but our part units have to be set separately. This is great because it means you can have some parts in inches and other parts in SI units if you want, but that can be really confusing also if you forget about it. So make sure to head up to Tools, Options again, Document Properties, Units, and make sure that your part units are also set to millimeters. All right, we are ready to start modeling, but we're going to do that in another video. So let's move on.